Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a video, several of these in a row here, over sections 1, 3, and 1, 4. This is actually the beginning of material for test 2. So in your notes, mark that this is the beginning of the test 2 material. Section 1, 3, and 1, 4 should be a complete review of what you did in Math 1033, or if you scored into Math 1105, it means you must have known this material at one point in your life, but I think everybody needs a little refresher, so we're going to go ahead and pull this back, okay? This has to do with lines. State the slope-intercept formula of a line, and most everybody, I think, remembers y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, <clears throat> b is the y-intercept, And if you wrote the y-intercept as an ordered pair, it would be 0, comma, b. So anytime you see something written, anytime you see an ordered pair of a line written as 0, comma, something, this number is this b. Okay? All right. Oh, excuse me. All right. The next one, state the point-slope formula. Now, let me help you understand this formula. I'm going to start off showing you where it came from. If I subtract the y values on the top and I divide it by the x values subtracted, that gives me the slope. All right, The change in y divided by the change in x is always the slope. Now, if I took this fact and I cleared fractions by multiplying both sides by x minus x sub 1, what would happen over here is these would cancel, and I would be left with y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Now, some books call this right here the point-slope formula. I believe your book does. Some of you may have remembered from 1033 that what they did is they took, they got y by itself. They wrote this as y equals m times x minus x sub 1 plus y sub 1. So either one of these two, okay, either this one or this one, can be thought of as the point-slope formula. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not a big advocate of that formula. I like using the form y equals mx plus b because 99% of the time, your answer to a problem involving lines always says put the answer in slope-intercept form. The reason I'm introducing this formula and wanting you to know it, some of your future teachers may want you to know it, and I want to make sure that I'm doing my job in this course preparing you for those courses. Okay? So it is a good idea to know the, this formula, again, either in this form or this form, and that's called the point-slope formula. Now, one last question here before we move on. Find the slope, if it exists, of the line containing this pair of points. Negative 20, comma, negative 15, and negative 8, comma, negative 1. If I call this first, or if I label this first point x sub 1, y sub 1, and I label the second point x sub 2, y sub 2, the way I find slope and this may be new to some of you the way I'm writing this. Change in y divided by the change in x. This is the same in the past. Some of you have been taught rise over run. Some of you have been taught y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This is saying the same thing. Change in y. To find the change in my y value, I take these two y values and I subtract them and it doesn't matter which one I start with. So if I want to find the change in y, I'm going to do negative 15 minus a negative 1. In other words, I took this y value, I took this y value, and I subtracted them. To find the change in x, on the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. This x value is negative 20. This x value is negative 8. 
that I am going to be subtracting. Okay? So, what I did is the first y value minus the second y value, and on the bottom, the first x value minus the second x value. And now we just have to be careful with our arithmetic. On top we have negative 15 plus 1. On the bottom we have negative 20 plus 8. Make sure I'm not messing up on my arithmetic. Nope. So on top I have negative 14. On the bottom I have what? A negative 12. Okay, double check my arithmetic. Negative 14, negative 12. Negative divided by negative becomes a positive. And let's see, both of these are divisible by 2. So that's going to leave me 7 over 6. So the slope of this line is the number 7 over 6. And what that means when I'm walking on the line is, if I'm at a point on the line, to get to another point on the line, I go up 7 blocks, and then I turn 6 blocks to the right. Okay.